Hey, everybody, we'll get started here in a minute. Um, just make sure your lines are muted. All right. Appreciate everybody for joining us today. Um, we have wide receivers coach Taylor Stubblefield. Um, as always, just raise your hand um, and I'll call on you. Um, we'll get started with Greg Pickle and then Tyler Donahue. You're on deck. Coach, good morning. Thanks for your time. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, Coach Franklin told us last night that the plan moving forward for Christian Driver is going to be in your room at receiver. So what can you tell us about the conversations you've had with him along the process here? And just what are some of the things you picked up for with him from the recruiting process that tell you that's the best fit for him and the program moving forward? Yeah, I think that we, we've had very honest dialogue um, throughout the whole process of recruiting um, Christian and his family. We, we gave him the option to start off at um, DB. And if we or he felt more comfortable um, moving to the offensive side of the ball, he would have that opportunity to do, to try out both. And so um, I think Christian feels more comfortable at the wide receiver spot. He's done a really good job at the DB spot um, as well. He is talented. He is uh, athletic enough um, to have the opportunity to play both. And so um you know, once the season's done or, or you know, as we can kind of move throughout the end of the season, um, we're going to, you know, transition to figuring out what's the best spot for him. And it, it, it looks like it's going to be receiver. Let's go to Tyler Donahue, 247, and then Rich Garcella, you're on deck. Taylor, thanks for the time. I'm, I'm going to follow up on Greg's question because Christian gives you five receivers in this freshman class now moving forward. I think barring any change for them are still going to be freshman eligible next year. What's the challenge of having a large group of young talent in the room like that and also the opportunity ahead of you? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> good question. Let me, let me, let me think about it for a moment. Um, the, the, the good thing about having, you know, the, the numbers in this class is that those guys are able to bond and those guys are able to go through some of the struggles of being a freshman, um, trying to compete and play at a very high level. They can do that together. They can uh, bounce questions off of each other. They can see where uh, each other are at. Because, you know, we had a couple that came in mid-year with uh, Omari and and Caden. And so there's some of those um, feelings that happen for those guys in March and, and April that some of the guys that are that just got here, what I mean just got here, I guess got here in August, um, they may be having to have those feelings now. And so they're able to support each other. Um, I really don't necessarily think it's a challenge or there's some uh, disadvantages to having um, those guys uh, here. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a, a negative side to having those guys um, um, or that number here. At the end of the day, we go through the recruiting process and try to figure out who are the best fits for us here at Penn State. And we felt that all five of them have the opportunity to be big time players. And so as, as they keep putting in the hard work in the classroom, in the weight room, and obviously on the football field, then um, when, when, when they're ready, um, they're going to they're gonna have that opportunity to contribute in a big way. Let's go to Rich Garcella and then Donnie Collins. You're on deck. Good morning, Taylor. Um, how would you describe the play of the regulars, Parker, Mitch, and Keandre? And are you satisfied with the production that you have gotten from them? The, the, the biggest thing is that we're sitting here at um, we're sitting here at eight and two um, with a with a pretty good football team. And I know that uh, my you know, you could say the starters right now, they're focused on winning. And um, whether their assignment is to um, run a clear out route, run the primary route, run a reverse. Or, or be the point 
of attack in the run game. They just want to try to do their best to execute their assignment. That's, that's what they're focused on. Um, yes, as receivers, we want the ball, right? We want the ball. And we take a tremendous amount of pride in this program talking about the process. And we celebrate the, the beauty of a route. So there's been multiple times this year where uh, the catch or the, the, the completion may not have happened, but the route was um, uh, allowed us to be open. And so we, we celebrate that. But our guys, our team is focused on the process, being 1-0 and, and, and making sure that we try to put our team in the best uh, position to be 1-0. Let's go to Donnie Collins with the Scranton Times Tribune and then Dan Gallen, you're on deck. Hey, Coach. We've heard a lot about the speed that Omari Evans brings. Uh, what has his development been like and how close do you think he is to kind of picking up some of the things that that a, a, a regular receiver would do that somebody who played quarterback in high school didn't know? Yeah, that, yeah you know, great, great question. Um, I absolutely um, – think the ceiling that Omari has is extremely high. Um, when somebody has played quarterback in the high school level for, for really majority of his career, there are certain body positions, positions, specific positions that his body has not been into playing quarterback. And so he has that speed. He has unbelievable, unbelievable explosiveness. It's just getting his body to be consistently in a position to be explosive, to be um, elusive, to be um, um, in a position to make a play. And I, I, I got to give my hats off to him because this last week and a half, I have challenged him like crazy. And he is really working on it these last two weeks of putting himself in a position to be effective. And so a lot of people don't understand that because they think, all right, dude can just run a go route. He's fast, just run a go route. Well, what you don't understand is that your release off the line, at some point you have to get into a football position to be explosive off the line. And when you open up your shoulders, you get knocked off, which don't allow you to get to top speed as fast as you can. And then somebody who, let's say, is a four six can run with you because you have not gotten to that football explosive position. It could be a second level release where your, your, your legs and hips are too narrow. And so as you try to navigate right or left, you can't because your feet are too close together getting them in a wider position, no different than any position that you think about, whether it's when you're squatting, when you're cleaning, when you're playing basketball and you're trying to defensive slide, when you're vertical jumping, it's getting in that position so that you can move explosively one way or the other so that you don't, that you don't get, get locked up. And so um, this last like 10 days, he's really, and we've had to have some tough conversations. I mean, it, there's been some conversations where, um, you know, he, he's, he's been, he's just, he's eager to get to that point. And this is where a lot of people also don't understand. A lot of people say, Hey, I have this goal to be here. I, I, I want to make the statement. I want to, I want to be here at this particular time. And, and, and there's this space in between that's the work. That's the hard work that people don't talk about. So he's putting in that hard work right now to hopefully get to this end result to say, hey, I'm going to be an elite wide receiver at Penn State. We're working towards that. Long answer. Sorry about that. Let's go to Dan Galen with 247 and then Johnny McGonigal. You're on deck. Uh, Taylor, uh, late in the past couple of games, we've seen Liam Clifford out there and it seems like he has a, a pretty good connection with Drew and, and has been able to to make some plays in these fourth quarters. Um, how have you seen him come along in that, I guess, in that slot role? Um, and, you know, as a second year guy, where do you feel like he's at in his development? Uh, I, I think that Liam 
it's taken Liam a little bit of time to trust how um, explosive he can be. Um, there's been moments where he's been like the stock market where the freaking stock goes up and then something happens and the stock goes back down. I think he's hit a good stretch of consistent play, just consistently being where you're supposed to be, expecting the ball when you're when, when it's supposed to be there. And he's capitalized on it. Um, you know, I, we, we, we celebrated as a staff, as you know, Coach Franklin celebrated it. And it's a, it's a small thing that guys don't notice and the fans probably don't notice is that he caught a screen um, a couple weeks back. Um, it might have been against um, – it might have been against Indiana, very similar to route that he caught last week where he caught it, put the ball in the inside arm, and he just got vertical. Well, the design of the play is to catch the ball and get outside and put the ball in the outside arm. Well, the one that he had earlier it gained like five or six yards. Well, the one he had in the last game gained like 15. Simple things like that that he has – that he is starting to really ingrain in him. It's making making it a part of who he is, not just something that we coach, not just something that we talk about. He's like, all right, all right, they're coaching this, and I'm seeing the results. So um, I'm happy for him. He's a he's a really good teammate. Um, he's starting to come out of his shell in terms of who he is as a person, and um, I, I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. Let's go to Johnny McGonigal, Penn Live, and then Andrew Destin. You're on deck. Yeah, Taylor, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. No problem. Uh, so last week we were able to talk to Phil Troutwine, and uh, you know he was explaining to us what he thinks the NFL scouts see in Olu. Uh, and, you know, Parker is another guy who will have to make a decision at some point here. And, you know, whenever that is, I guess, how do you see Parker's game translating to the uh, to the next level? Ooh, um, well, at the next level, you got to be able to run. you got to be able to um, – get open you got to be able to catch the ball and uh those are some of the things that he does extremely well um sometimes with guys his size you have to be elite and his hands are absolutely elite so um if given that opportunity to to play at the next level i have um full confidence that that parker will be a huge asset to any nfl team Let's go to Andrew Destin with the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, and then Tyler, you're on deck. Hey Taylor, thanks for doing this. Um, no talked problem. to Mitch Tinsley yesterday, and he mentioned that as a whole, uh, the receiver room probably could have done a better job this year of perimeter blocking. And I'm curious if you agree with that assessment, and what goes into being a good perimeter blocker. And uh, the last part would just be if there's anybody you could point to as a good example that you kind of use uh, throughout meetings and stuff like that for the team. Thanks. Uh, yeah, you know. Um... The, the, the reason why he's he he talked about it is because we stress stress about it. It's something that we talk about in terms of like the the phrase "do a better job." That essentially says that it, sometimes it comes across as we are not doing a good job. Well, it's not that we're not doing a good job. It's just we can do better. We can do more. And we 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 often take the the approach in our, our room that we can be better. We want to be better. And so what goes into a great perimeter blocking is first and foremost is knowing where the ball is going to go, having the idea of what the defense is doing so that you can be in a position to, to, to block. And what's happened at some point, uh, some points during the season, guys have either chased a DB when they don't need to chase them because the ball is going to get ready to come outside and, and they haven't taken the, 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 the common sense approach of understanding the play that says, hey, that DB is going inside. Let them go because the play is going outside. I'm going to sit tight. And I'm going to cruise or ooze block the way that we describe it so that when that defender does see that the ball comes outside, I'm going to be there. So they'll chase it. They'll cross, potentially cross their feet and they'll get out of position, very similar to what I was speaking about earlier. Uh, about Amari is being in the right position. And then and then last is they got to want to. They got to have that desire to win the individual battle no matter what the situation is, whether it's run, pass, special teams, or whatever. 
They have to have the desire to refuse to lose, to hate to lose, and to want to win every single battle that they come across. And, and so um, we, we, we take that seriously in our room in terms of perimeter blocking. We want to be better. We want to, even if the play goes for an efficient or an explosive, which they have, we want more. We want more. We want we want pancakes. We want we want to put guys on their back. We want to we want to make sure that the DB knows that this is going to be a fight when when, when you come uh, uh, to perimeter blocking with Penn State receivers. Let's go to Tyler Donahue. We got time for a few more. Tyler and then Greg. Uh, Taylor, I know it's a fine line in, in college football and bringing parents into any kind of personnel conversation, but. When, when Christian's dad is a former Pro Bowl player at the same position you guys are looking at him at, I'm curious what kind of input Donald Driver has had in kind of your thought process as a staff and considering his track record with James going back 15 years or so, what has that been like? And, and, and if at all, maybe he's been completely standoff with it. Um, Donald has been um, like he always is, just an absolute pro at, almost, at, at everything he does whether it be just being a dad, um, a businessman, a player, whatever, he's an absolute pro. And so, yeah, do we uh, chop it up and talk shop? Yeah. You know, one of my first, um, in 2010, I did an internship uh, with the Green Bay Packers. And, um, you know, Donald was there. And he took me under his wing a little bit. He 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 was coming off a little bit of an injury um, but we we bonded. He 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 took care of me. We talked about drills. We talked about receiver play. And so, as a young coach at that time, you know that that carried a lot of weight with me. And so, um, knowing the quality of a, of a player that Donald Donald was, knowing the quality of people that Christian is coming from. Uh, it made it easy for us to believe that Christian Driver is going to be one heck of a player. Not a not not to not to forget what his film also represents. And so, we will um, have conversations with, with with Donald to talk about receiver play. It's a great resource that we have uh, mindset wise as well. I mean, he's been able to play at the at the highest level, um, and and win at the highest level. So. We absolutely, I know myself, will absolutely tap into to his mind and get his his thoughts on certain things. Let's go to Greg, and then we'll finish up with Rich. Coach, obviously an enormous recruiting period is on deck here after the final two games with both high school recruiting and, of course, the portal opening. Have you allowed yourself to start thinking about that, what it's going to be different this year compared to previous years, and just how important – uh, these next few weeks are not just for the current team development, but also the continued development of the future of the program. Yeah, it's something we think about every day. Really, recruiting is a 24-hour, um, seven days a week job, and we, we think about what our roster is going to look like. Um, we try to navigate, um, you know, what are our needs at each position, and we're trying to figure that out. And, yeah, with the transfer portal coming up, uh, opening up or transfer recruiting co coming up, is yeah, we're 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 going to try to um, add the right person if that right person is there. And, you know, we 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 did our job and we're very uh, thorough with with getting Mitch Tinsley. And I would like to believe that Mitch um, has been an asset to to the to the room and uh, to the program. So we're gonna we are going to uh, recruit our tails off and find the right guy that we think can be uh, shoot. You know, the next. Allen Robinson, Chris Godwin, James uh, Jahan Dotson. We're going to try to figure out who can help us win a Big Ten championship. Last question, Rich. Taylor, you know, obviously Caden Saunders came there as a highly touted recruit. What have you seen from him in terms of development this year? How has he handled not playing? Um. You know what, Caden is extremely rational, and um, he realizes how hard it is to play in in college football, let alone as a freshman. Um, so he he came to Penn State, I think, a little bit. Um, 
that there was a, a period of time where he was having a whole bunch of ice cream, maybe not training as much as he, he uh, should have. And so um, I, I don't, I don't think he's frustrated. I don't think that he's sad or ha you know, happy in terms of one way or the other. I think he's determined. And um, these last few weeks, he's done a little bit of uh, D squad work. I think that that is always good for a young guy. I can speak for myself uh, specifically as a, as a true freshman. I was able to go against our starting corners and obviously going against our corners here at Penn State. You're getting work and having some success against them during during a, a D squad period is build some confidence. And so uh, I tell you what, um, he ran a couple routes yesterday, whether it be one on ones or whether it was. Um, in some of our other periods, he looks fast, he's getting more polished, he's developing. And that's what it's about, is making sure that these guys get developed. And so um, Caden, Caden's determined. Awesome. Pre